But uh, yeah, I just uh, thought it was kind of uh, neat that you uh, that I was able to chat with you last night on Facebook and uh, to set up an interview because uh, I've always been kind of uh, been kind of had an interest in parent activity and stuff like that, and and uh, you know, big believer in ghosts and, and spirits and stuff like that. And and uh, how did you uh, how did you get into the business, so to speak? For taps. Well, I, actually, it's been in my family for generations. My grandmother was somebody that people went to. My mother was somebody people went to. We kind of grew up around it. As a matter of fact, the other uh, lead investigator on my local taps family team is my sister. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I mean that's uh, wow. So, so you guys have been doing this for quite a long time, and uh, so what? Uh, what kind of? Uh, well, I mean, what got your interest in, 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 uh, into doing it, more or less, rather than getting involved right away? Like, what, what motivated you? Well, it was kind of, uh, it uh, kind of fell on our laps, if, uh, if that makes any sense. As, uh, as uh, people approached our family about this sort of thing, uh, our family pretty much got to be known for that, for the, to be those people, if you know what I mean. Sure. And uh, as I got a little older into my teens, and uh, and after that, I started researching very carefully. And as uh, as people would approach us about helping them with a problem, of course, I'm 53 years old. So I, you know, I, even 25, 30 years ago, this was really hush hush. People didn't want anyone to know that they had a problem. Yeah, and they would say, you know, I'm having all this stuff going on in my house, but don't tell anybody. I asked you about it they were more afraid of people thinking they were crazy than they were whatever might have been in their house. Uh -huh. So uh, I kind of gravitated toward doing it. I didn't really get into a full group situation until about uh, 11 years ago. And uh, I, I uh, started working with one group. We branched off and started our own group, Rip Paranormal, eight years ago, almost nine years ago now. And I've been, uh, we became TAPS family six years ago, and I have been a member of the Atlantic Paranormal Society myself uh, for, well, it's, uh, in April it was three years. Okay. Wow, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, and in case if anybody's wondering who we're chatting with, I forgot to give you a proper introduction. This is Jeff Leeper, and if the name's not familiar, or if you're not familiar with his name, uh, you'd be familiar with TAPS and the show Ghost Hunters, and anybody that's ever done anything with paranormal investigation, and, and I've always had a big interest in that sort of thing, and I was always waiting for that time when I could interview somebody that's had some experience with actually doing some ghost hunting, and uh, I'm sure you got some good stories to tell. <laughs> we have some doozies. Uh, we actually train at a working funeral home. Uh, I figure if uh, our new investigators are going to scream and run, they can do it there and not at somebody's house. Yeah. So when, when people call for your help, they don't really have any sort of uh, education in this other than the TV shows. Uh -huh. So they have to rely on your education. They don't have any confidence. They have to rely on your confidence. And... You know, it's it's uh, the people who went to this kind of because the TV shows are on. That's all well and good, but if you don't go into it knowing that you have a huge responsibility to the people you're helping, uh, stick to Eastern State Penitentiary and Fort Mifflin and things like that. We need investigators that go and do that, and more power to you for it. But uh, you might want to stay out of people's homes if if you don't sit back and realize how you affect people's lives so yeah this this has been a lifetime uh, endeavor for me it's uh, and I'm still learning um, <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh 30 years uh, solidly in the field and I I know just enough to know how stupid I am so it kind of gets me to the next question you know when I watch a show like ghost hunters and I see what they what they show and stuff like that, uh, I, I think a lot of people probably get a little uh, skeptical because you know it's all it's supposed to be like almost like reality TV and you don't actually see the ghost or, or kind of what they what they see even though you can't really see ghosts but I mean you know like it's like they don't show I mean they show what they need to show but then they I don't know so I'm, th I'm thinking some people probably think that they're that this is kind of fake more or less to the to the real paranormal activity that's actually out there I mean what are your thoughts on that? 
Oh, well, my thoughts are they go in 8 to 16 hours, sometimes a week in a place, and they show it in 44 minutes. So a lot is cut out. And a lot of things that uh, many people would call evidence, we don't, because just being in this field so many times, you know, people will say, well, here's a picture of an orb, stop it. Sony Cameras has come out and said, that is a photographic anomaly. So we don't use that as evidence, while many people may. Uh, it's just uh, you know, time in the field. We, we don't show anything that isn't there, because to be perfectly honest, when you go and you actually do investigate, that sort of thing, you know, you'll see, what was that? What the frig? What the fetch? What was that? You know, that's that goes on through the night, but it's few and far between. It's you know, it might be hours between uh, that sort of a thing. But uh, you know, it's also TV, so Pilgrim cuts out the parts that that uh, look like you're watching paint dry all night. So people go into it expecting to see all this stuff going on, and it really doesn't. It's uh, if you're in for for the thrill. You might want to wait until you, you go visit uh, Waverly Hills or Eastern State or Penfield or something like that. You know, one of the big places where you're pretty sure to get something. Oh sure, wow, yeah. I mean, that's uh, I've never, you know, I've never done any paranormal investigating myself. But I mean, I think how cool would it be to to? I mean, we see. I live in northern Minnesota, so we have a lot of old houses and old buildings and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That. Uh, look pretty freaky. I mean, uh, I think it would be kind of cool if I had all the right equipment and everything to, to maybe see what spirits might be there or might not be or whatever. And, uh, I don't know, without uh, without people thinking that I'm nuts, you know. <laughs> well, you know what, we have two teams in Minnesota. Okay. Our family has two teams, one's in St. Paul and one's in Hiving. Oh. So, uh, you know, we sometimes will take uh, <laughs> civilians, if you will. Yeah. Uh, people to shadow the team and uh, you, you never know you can give them a call and uh, find out if they can let you go along and you can do uh, a walking interview oh, I've wow. done a lot of those wow that would be kind of cool yeah I didn't realize that we had some in Minnesota see I live uh, real close to uh, to Winnipeg like or like the Canadian border more or less so I'm okay. like maybe four or five hours away from Hibbing but uh and then well, probably another six hours away from St. Paul because that's more southern Minnesota. But uh, yeah, I mean that uh, is there pretty much a, a paranormal group in every state? Just about almost, almost. We have uh, three in Pennsylvania, uh, Wyoming, Montana. I don't have Alaska or Hawaii, and uh, or West Virginia. The Dakotas are. It's it's hard to find a team there. But uh, we get so many requests. I've 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 probably sent out. Oh my gosh! In the last three years, thirty thousand requests to the different teams from people that oh, want wow. help, or else they have questions, things like that. It's it's amazing, and and now with the the para entertainment, you know, ghost hunters, haunted uh, collector. Uh, my friend John Zappas has that show. Great guy. Um, ghost adventures. All these other TV shows that are out there. Some people don't like them. I do because. I've seen what it's done to the field. It's opened people up. It's more mainstream now, and people are less afraid to get help. Yeah, and I, and I suppose, I, like, uh, so if you do, does somebody have to call you and, like, let you know, like, hey, we, we want you to come over here and check this out because something doesn't seem right? Oh, yeah. Uh, we get people that, uh, well, they go to the TAPS family website. You can, go, you can uh, link to that right off the TAPS website. Uh, tapsfamily.com and there's a place to contact us apply request help and when you request help it, it'll take you to uh, a page that'll that'll uh, show you the teams that are closest to you and it, it's easy to uh, access those teams that way they'll uh, if you send if you ask for help you you will hear back from them pretty shortly and uh, we'll set up an interview and uh, go to your home probably get some base readings discuss what's going on fill out some paperwork so we have everything documented and then uh, set up a time to come in with the team uh, do an investigation usually within two weeks we'll be back with the results honestly most of the time we find out it's not something paranormal I would say easily 90% of the time we find out it's not paranormal but uh -huh. why be afraid in your house if you don't have to if there's something wrong 
And if you're confused and don't know what's going on, give us a call. Yeah, and then I'm sure everything will be kind of confidential anyway because uh, some, oh, pe some people probably don't want anybody else to know that, oh, I'm having a, an investigation or paranormal investigation happening in my house. You know, I don't want nobody to know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that, and, and that's, that's how it is. It's very confidential. There isn't any posting your photographs on websites or anything. Any, any, as a matter of fact, when we do the paperwork, we fill out a confidentiality agreement. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's it's pretty safe. If somebody wants their pictures on websites or wants that stuff shared, sure, that's great. If not, if that's not what we're there for. There's no charge for this. We're not doing this to make money off of people. And uh, all all the taps fail. All the t once a year we'll do uh, criminal background checks on all their members uh -huh. because we don't want to send you know a a, a, you know, a child molester or a. Uh, or, or someone, you know, a felon in someone's house at three o'clock in the morning. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, and but uh, if you don't make no money doing this, how are you able to get funding to drive and to for the? For we fund the, ourselves. Okay. So, uh, as a matter of fact, no taps family team, and to be honest, most of the teams out there do not charge anything. I've driven five, six hours one way to do investigations and the time is donated okay even for your supplies and everything that you need we buy our own okay uh, all the equipment uh that's why you don't see a lot of teams running around with thermal imaging cameras because <laughs> yeah. they're, they're darn expensive and where the heck do you buy them at i'm sure you can't get them at walmart or anything <laughs> no uh actually uh things like thermal imaging cameras are available from like Fleur.com, um, you know, there are, are places that uh, supply for, like, plumbing and heating businesses and for electricians, things yeah. like that. Uh, EMF detectors that you see all the time on the TV shows. Those are, you know, you can get those from, uh, well, some stores like Home Depot will have some of the cheaper uh, cheaper models. Uh, but, yeah, those are, those are electrician's tools. Uh-huh. So we, we do a lot of uh, using tools that were made for other industries, and we, and we uh, incorporate them into this particular industry. Although lately, all well, in the last 10 years or so, we've had people developing tools just for this. Uh, Paul Bradford, uh, my friend from Ghost Turners International, he's also uh, the leader of our one of our TAPS family. And uh, Paul is big in development of new to new toys for this Gulk Venator, um, a maple and, uh, just for this. So it, the field and the science is advanced. Uh, it's kind of an exciting time to be in this field. Well, it's almost like, uh, and, and I said last night with you on Facebook that you know. My love for paranormal kind of came from just a love of like Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 and, and maybe watching a few horror movies here and there. But I mean, obviously what you guys do is obviously more real than what you would see in like a Ghostbusters or whatever. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that's entertainment. And, you know, that's, 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 that's fun. Heck, I like those movies too. <laughs> the only thing I don't like is, uh, quite honestly, we'll show up. And, and and we tell people. I mean, people. Oh, you're you're with Taps. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, can I have my my sister-in-law here? My, uh, uh, no, ma'am. That's not why we're doing this. If if there's something you need help with, we'll be more than happy to come. And you know, there's no charge, and we'll be we'll be there, and, and we'll do everything we can to help you out. But when we show up, sometimes uh, there will be people standing outside with with video cameras and cameras. Oh yeah. And you, and you can't really get anything done yeah i suppose because of the show ghost hunters and all these other shows that they pretty much uh you know have gotten fa i mean they're popular shows out there you know oh, yeah. even for just being television but i mean some people don't understand kind of yeah even if they watch the show for a long time they still don't understand why you do what you do you know it's not for ratings or not for you know oh, no. to get an oscar or anything like that it's, it's to actually see if there's any paranormal activity going on yeah, well, people, uh, yeah, people are scared in their own homes, and, and most of the time there's no reason. And uh, that's that's what we do is we try to figure out what's going on and, and uh, see what we can do about <coughs> solving their problem. Most of the time it is solved with uh, changing out uh, 
maybe there's something wrong electrically. Maybe you have uh, some kind of interference, uh, some kind of a field in your phone line because somebody didn't stick to code when they were, uh, you know, wiring up your phone lines and your electric lines. It, there, there's a lot going on, especially out east here where the house is really old. Oh, yeah. And they've been rewired several times, and you have five or six kinds of wiring in there. And the electromagnetic fields in the place are, are just absolutely off the hook and our bodies run on about 12 watts um, we are electric that's uh, and when you get something that's that's reading high really over a uh, a reading of three on a gauss meter emf detector that you'll see on uh, the shows uh-huh long exposure to that can interfere with your uh with your neural pathways it, it uh, inter interrupts the flow of neurons along your neural pathways. It tells you you're seeing things and hearing things and smelling things. There's tactile sensations. And it's not because you're crazy and it's not because there's a monster there. It's because your body is reacting the way it's supposed to, to poisons. So people don't know that. It's not something you think about. So it's our responsibility to let them know that. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh, one question I had... Uh was there an episode? I think there was an episode of Ghost Hunters. Or maybe uh, maybe this was a long time ago. I don't remember. But did you guys actually go to the house uh, or the hotel where the the movie The Shining was filmed? Actually, the the Stanley Hotel uh, in Estes Park, Colorado. Beautiful place. Oh yeah. Uh, that isn't where it was filmed. It was actually filmed at another hotel. Oh. And that was that was uh, that was where the uh, inspiration came from. Stephen King, I believe it was. 401, don't quote me on that, yeah. the room he stayed in, that was just so wickedly active. And that that was his inspiration to do that movie. Oh. And the hotel itself, actually, uh, I know a lot of people who have gotten a great deal of activity out of that hotel. Oh. When, well, when, when uh, Jason was staying in that room, his glass exploded by the bed. Oh, wow. There were just some really, really interesting and exciting things. And because Jason is weird like I am... <laughs> You don't get you don't get scared over about that stuff. You you get excited. Yeah. The things that are supposed to scare strange people like us don't. Other things scare us. I mean, if you put a you know, I can go to Eastern State Penitentiary and, and go down in into the bowels of the place in a cell all by myself at three o'clock in the morning and I can take a nap. <laughs> but if if you put a snake in there with me, I will <coughs> climb the walls like a B grade movie demon trying to get away from it. Oh jeez. So so, you know, we our our fears are kind of different. They're they're always there. Uh -huh. Self preservation is important. It's just that we're wired a little differently. So what's what's some of the most scariest things I mean, even if it didn't scare you, but like what's some of the most intense things that you've been a part of since you've been doing this? Well, I've been a part of uh well I've <laughs> A lot of things. Doors opening and closing. That's pretty common. Uh, I remember once when we were training in that funeral parlor, we were taking a break. So we all went into the office, turned the lights on, sitting around talking about, you know, what did you experience? How did you like this? We're going to go over this audio. You know, just as uh, giving the, the new folks a little chance for a break. And all of a sudden, I felt this hard gripping sensation on my right shoulder. Huh. And it got harder and harder. And finally, I said wait a minute, I, you guys get your cameras ready because you don't get to see this too often. I pulled my uh, collar away from my sleeve and you could see finger marks in my shoulder that were getting darker and darker and darker. And three of the people said, uh, bye. And they went out the door and, and I never heard from them again, which is, you know, just as well. No, nothing against them. It wasn't for them. Yeah. But they didn't do that at somebody's house. And I actually have the, a photograph of that, not injury, but uh, the marks that were made by that. Oh. Uh, on our website, so it, it's th there have been a lot of things. You know, you, obviously the the stuff that a lot of people get pushed and shoved and scratches and and things like that. It's not always something bad just because it happens. Doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it happened. Uh, <laughs> I had my left shoulder pulled out of joint one time. Oh, jeez. That was yeah. That was a little more drastic. Um, how how did I, that how did that happen? How did how did you get your shoulder pulled? <laughs> Uh, I felt uh, a, a terrible pressure on my left arm and shoulder and my chest muscle, and I thought, holy smokes, what am I doing having a heart attack here? <laughs> and and I'm grabbing a hold of something, holding myself up, and I notice my hand is almost down on the floor. Finally, when it uh, it let loose about 
10 minutes later, there were stretch marks on the muscle. There were uh, hand marks on my arm and shoulder. So that was, that was pretty interesting. I didn't get all scared about it. I got uh, startled by it. Sure. But, yeah. but, but it, was, it wasn't anything scary. It, it, uh, it was just, it was really interesting. It, it does get your attention now. So, yeah, a lot of members. Uh, one of our members was punched in the back so hard it left her a, a really, really dark uh, bruise in the middle of her back. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and uh, this lady was the, uh, the object of another attack in that same building at another date where she got a big knot in the back of her head. So it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's, it can be scary. Not to me too much because I'm weird. Um, <laughs> I've been working with a, a, a very close friend of mine by the name of Bill Bean. Uh, he is a deliverance minister. He, um, his family was ab- actually decimated by paranormal activity when he was very young. He lost his mother at only age 32. His father died before that. And uh, he was left an orphan at 15 years old because of the activity and the things that happened in his home. They had uh, exorcists. They had all sorts of things, you know, to try to uh, help him. And uh, he went a little crazy, 15 years old, no parents. Yeah. But uh, he straightened himself up. He went back to school. He went to the seminary. And now he is what we call a deliverance minister, and he deals with these problems for other people. And he's been very, very effective. The, the last one I did with him, uh, the lady of the house was actually scratched oh. dreadfully all over her chest and back in kind of a last-ditch effort when, when, the, uh, when the deliverance was being done. Now, they haven't had any activity since then, but um, I guess it was kind of like a, a, you know, a wolf when when it's being shot and it, and it kind of bites at the last thing that it can bite at. Yeah. And uh, but she hasn't had any trouble since. Huh. So yeah, we've seen some ugly things, but we've seen some very very uh, positive things that that come out of bad situations. So it's it's very um, rewarding to be in this field. So if you're uh, in it for the right reasons. Yeah. And, and uh, one other thing I was going to mention too, it's like. Uh, well, I, I and I know these are just movies, of course. But uh, I was going to talk about the Paranormal Activities movies. I don't know if you've seen. <laughs> I don't. I'm sure you've seen some of them. Uh, it, I'm sure that's nothing like what you guys are actually seeing in real life. But I mean, like, what are your that, thoughts? That what is that's what we see on steroids. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know the guy who actually was the paranormal advisor for those movies, uh-huh. and and I teased him about it, and he said, "Hey, he said it's." Entertainment. I said, I know, but it's fun to tease you. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, it's, now, now, do those things exist? Sure. Uh, a lot of people don't believe the Amityville thing. Some very bad things happened at Amityville. And, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my, my good friend, John Zaffis, who does, uh, Haunted Collector, was actually in on that investigation with the Warrens, who are his aunt and uncle. He was only 15 years old when, when that was his first big time out doing this because he was going to do it so they said if you're going to do it you're going to learn from the right people because they couldn't stop him he was stubborn like some other people like I know <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah there, there's a lot out there there are a lot of things that do happen that are very real and uh, can be very frightening so, and uh, just like your your movie that you like so much, who you got to call? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so what do you what do you say to somebody who if, if somebody goes up to you and say, you know what, I don't believe in ghosts, ghosts aren't real? What do you say to that person? If if somebody what came up to you I, and said, I said that's, that. you know, that's cool. I have no problem with that. You know, I I I'm not to convince anybody one way or the other. I'm, and if that's what you believe, more power to you. Let's go have a drink. <laughs> But I'm talking about the people that get into long discussions that are like, you know, I've seen what you guys do on TV, I see all this stuff, but I still don't believe it. Prove it to me that there's something out there that's real, you know? You can't. You can't <laughs> prove it. If someone doesn't believe it and someone wants to prove you wrong, you can't prove it. Uh, you, you can't call forth a miracle <laughs> and you can't, you know, summon up a ghost to say, hey, tell him you're real. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The, the thing that you do get your uh, satisfaction from is uh, I'm still getting Christmas cards from people from 30 years ago <laughs> that, thanking me for helping them in their homes. Oh, and wow. That 
that's what we get for pay. Uh -huh. uh, I had a little girl, we, we had an interview that turned into an impromptu investigation. And uh, there was a, one little girl, uh, twin girls they had, that was following me all over the house. While I'm, I'm looking and we're looking at all these things and, and finding out what's going on with these people. And it turned out to be everything <laughs> was solvable. Everything was able to be figured out. And the little girl, when I'm leaving and we're packing up, she came over and she grabbed a hold of my pant leg and she looked up at me and she said, Hey, mister, I'm going to sleep in my own bed tonight and I'm not even scared. <laughs> and you want to talk about getting paid, that's payment. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Wow, that's oh, huh. yeah, little yeah. girl. Now you'd be scared. That's that's pretty cool. Because I mean, how many kids can you say you know? Can't, I mean, you know, they don't get scared of much, but I mean, <laughs> some people still get scared of ghosts and stuff. And even well, sure of, of any anybody of, of any age. I mean, I I personally, I don't know if I was in a dark room in a in a, in a old say hotel or or a mansion somewhere where I was upstairs, you know, by myself. I'd probably get freaked out a little bit, but. I don't, I don't know how scared I'd be. <laughs> I get creeped out, but I don't get scared. I get excited. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but like I said, I'm weird. Oh, yeah. we got to be weird. You gotta, but, you know. yeah, we found out everything that was there was, was something that was caused by an environmental issue uh -huh. as opposed to a ghost issue. And they had had a team come in that was unprepared, and they told them, well, you have demons and you have all this in your house, and they were absolutely horrified. Wow. We got there. All eight members of the family are in the same room. Oh, jeez. They had moved the television and a mini fridge into the dining room and they all sat there. When we left, they were all sleeping in their own rooms again because it wasn't that we solved anything and chased away ghosts. We educated them as to what was going on. Uh -huh. and, and they're excited. I mean, and actually, uh, we were very fortunate in that we were able to... Uh, affect them positively they their their house was a, a fire trap we were getting uh, emf electromagnetic fields remember that i said would make you see things and hear sure. things things like that well they were they had all the symptoms and uh the place was an absolute fire trap the walls were warm because <laughs> the the wiring was so substandard wow so we were very fortunate and we felt very blessed to be able to help them like that and we still get emails and and uh, and cards and things, you know, thanking us and how are you doing? Just checking on us because you, you don't you don't say, well, that was fun and I'll see you later. Yeah, you, you stay in touch with those people. Oh sure, yeah. And uh, so one uh, another question I had uh, was, uh, you, you like I don't you know it's probably hard to do obviously because you can't really like you said you can't really do it, but but like w would it be something if you could find like. If you if you seen a ghost or if you heard a ghost or something like that, and you'd be able to tell how old it is, you know, I, I don't know if that's a weird EVPs, question. Or <laughs> electronic, or electronic voice phenomenon uh -huh. recordings of uh, voices who gave us direct answers to things. Sometimes you ask, you know, what's your name, and you'll get a direct answer. Uh -huh. Sometimes you ask, you know, what year is this, you'll get a direct answer. So, so if you do the uh, research on the property and uh, sometimes I'll do a geo of the place and we always Google Earth it and get uh, information on where the closest rivers and where the closest railroads and highways and stuff are you know, there's a lot of research that goes into it but yeah you can make those connections oh, how okay. old it is and, and how long it's been there that sort of thing so I thought that was kind of a weird question to ask because just because you know it's just, I don't know, just because we're talking about spirits and stuff like that, I just kind of, you know, I know anything's possible and everything, but just, you know, I, I, you're the first person I've had a conversation with like this for a long, long time, so it's like, I want to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew everything. <laughs> yeah. but, but, I mean, I might, I might uh, you know, get hit by a train tomorrow and then get over there and say, huh, I had that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> My face red. <laughs> but you enjoy what you do pretty much, though, bottom line. I love what I do. I love what I do. I, I, uh, I, I, I like the reaction from the people. I like, well, I'm not a thrill seeker, but I, 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 I love getting evidence. And But when I'm at someone's house, I love not getting evidence. I love finding out that, you know, while 
they have uh, fluorescent lights and they have bad wiring and they have dimmer switches and they have all these things that are that are beefing up the the EMF the electromagnetic fields or uh, as in one case you go you go into their uh, laundry room and and all of a sudden you were lightheaded and and you felt disassociated and it turned out that they had an eight foot shelf above the uh, the washer and dryer that had plumbing supplies and plumbing blues and paints and all things that you need to move outside and all of a sudden your ghost problem is gone because it's, you know, it's not making you sick anymore. We had a gentleman who was on the, uh, the list for a uh, lung transplant. His house turned out to be built on top of an old strip mine. Oh, wow. He had arsenic in the water, arsenic in the ground, arsenic in the plants that he planted out in his garden. And these were things that were solvable, and, and, and his health has improved greatly. And we don't feel like, wow, look what we did. We feel absolutely dumbstruck that we were able to help. I mean, it, it, we're very grateful when something like that happens. It's kind of funny that, that the guy wouldn't have known that from the beginning, like before when he bought the house or whatever. <clears throat> well, he bought the house. It was an old Catholic church. Oh, okay. And uh, he bought this Catholic church and turned it into a home and a uh, studio. Uh-huh. But... Yeah, the, I mean, it had been there for over 100 years, so that's not something that you would uh, really consider. And most people that, that lived in the area know nothing about huh. the, uh, you know, well, the strip mine, obviously they knew it was there because back in the old days they didn't have to do the reclamation. Yeah. You know, there's, there's still big gouges in the ground, but most of them have pine trees growing on because they grow fast. Sure. But, uh, but, yeah, that's not something you think of. You don't think, oh, gee, there must be arsenic in the ground. <laughs> we, we were very fortunate that uh, one of our researchers found that. Uh huh. I yeah, you know, and I figure that you know, like most places, like when you buy a house or whatever, or maybe before you buy a house, the person previous or the previous owner has like all the paperwork you want to know about the house. You know how old it was, or you know how many times it got remodeled. You know how uh, many you know lawn care. Yeah. So it's like wow. I'm sure most of the places you guys go to. It's, it's, it's really a surprise just about every time, you know, what you find. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. Uh, when you find that secret room off of the basement, yeah. that gives you kind of a flutter because that happens a lot. When you find, uh, oh, we just found a, uh, a building near us that uh, was used for the Underground Railroad. We had no idea. Oh, jeez. And, uh, you know, it, it's not on any of the, uh, any of the blueprints. It's not anything like that. That was kept a secret. They didn't want people to know there was a sub-basement where they were hiding slaves. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> there's a lot of stuff out there that just is not recorded. I guess. Wow, that's that's amazing. I, I, <laughs> I mean, when you, well, yeah, when you think about it, just very, very, uh, very weird, but very, very interesting, too, because if, if you never knew what was down there, and then you're just discovered for the first time, and everybody else is like, what the heck? I didn't know that was down there. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. That's kind of exciting. Uh, you, have to, you have to win something like that very carefully and very slowly. Light it up well. Make sure uh, you don't take chances with your with your team members. Yeah. You know, tie off. Make sure everything's safe before anybody can go in there. But if we find something like that nobody knew about, we don't go in. We stop and we say, you know, hey, owner, guess what's here? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure they're like, "Huh? What are you talking about?" Yeah, yeah. There, there's some mouths hanging wide open when you find that stuff, and that that's kind of fun. That that adds some of the fun to it. Now we do do things that are fun. We investigate some of the more public places. It's um, it's kind of a something to pay back our our team member for working so hard to help people. Yeah, you know, you, you go to some of the places that are fun. Some of the more public places. Sure. I'm I'm a cheapskate. I refuse to pay. To go into those places, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, fortunately, uh, we we often get invitations for those, so that's that's kind of cool. So, uh, 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 one last question I'm going to ask, and then we'll kind of end this interview. Uh, I'm going to refer back to Ghostbusters only because I want to make a point. I just want to make a point sure. with you, uh, and and you can tell me if this is real or not. Now, in the All movie, right. in the movies, you know, like if they saw like a ghost or something like that. It would have, like, some residue, like slime or something like that. Oh, no. You ever run into that at all? (laughs) 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 I wonder. (laughs) You know what? In 
four or five generations and over 30 years of this, I've never seen anything that remotely resembled ectoplasm. It's, uh, that was, uh, that's a word that was made up for fun. Sure. Sounds like a fun word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right there, Jeff. You know, I tell you what. Well, I mean, I could talk to you for days or, or for hours or, about paranormal activity, and I think I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot already in this 36-minute interview already. And <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure you know you you could you could tell more stories and stuff like that too if we had more time. <laughs> <laughs> well, any other time you want to give me a yell, go ahead. There's a lot of it out there. Oh, sure. Do you ever do, like, uh, video interviews at all, like on Skype oh, at sure. all? sure. Okay. Sure. Maybe I'll hit you up this summer, and maybe we can do something like that, because I would love to do, maybe do, like, an hour length of just, maybe you can show some photos or something like that if you have sure. or whatever. Sure, Yeah. Well, 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 and and I, I translate the video well. I'm a very pretty man. Oh, yeah. I, I saw what you look like. You kind of look like uh, you have a beard and everything, and you're kind of a bigger guy, but... Uh, that's all right, you know. You kind of look like a what the what Elon Mitchell Smith looks like right now from the, from Weird Science because he has a beard. Ah, there you go. He has a beard and the, kind of the same f facial features like you. So <laughs> maybe you got a twin or something. <laughs> Although he's like forty, I think he's like four in his forties or whatever. But forty three, I think, or whatever. But <laughs> yeah, well then I'm ten years older than you. Oh boy, and I'm only twenty nine. In case you're wondering. So I'm just a young guy just learning about all these different things, whether I have a celebrity on or, or somebody that's done paranormal activity or, or whatever. I'm just I'm doing this. I'm not positive about my age. I know my uh, birth certificate is scratched from a cave wall in Ireland somewhere. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, who knows? I mean, I, I think in, in the long run, I think we've all lived before. I believe that, you know, if you're a good person, you, you live again. Because, you know, they say, you know, your bodies might die, but your spirit always lives. So, who knows? You know, we could have been around during the 1800s or something, you know? You never know. Oh, you never know. <laughs> I, I was probably around during the 1800s when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or maybe you were, like, a president or something like that. You you have no idea. You just never know. <laughs> well, when I first went to school, they didn't even teach history yet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Had to do something, you know. Yeah, yeah. Had to make something happen. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I tell you what, uh, this has been a lot of fun, and, and we'll do something this summer. I think I'll get a hold of you, maybe next, or maybe in June or July. We'll, I'll get back to you, and we'll do something fun because it would be kind of fun to learn more about this, and and you can show the viewer, visually tell the viewers kind of what you're talking about, in case they're still, sure. in, in case they're still skeptical. <laughs> oh, there's going to be skeptics out there forever. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. All <laughs> right, man. Well, you take smile and drink my coffee. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And live to live for another day. <laughs> All right, man. You take care and uh, thanks again. I appreciate it. Thank you. You take care. You too. And that was Jeff Leeper, uh, as you heard. He's one of the uh, not the founder of the Taps family, but uh, he was a his family was a part of it. And he's like a co-founder more or less, and. And he just, uh, it, it's just kind of fun just to talk to people like this in all realms of life. Because you don't just have to be a, a celebrity and, and to, to be on my show or whatever. You have, have to do something interesting, you know, entertaining, if anything, you know, because of the show Ghost Hunters. But I, also if it's something like involved with history or something like that, that's fun. That's not just kind of silly or whatever. And some people probably will say, well, paranormal activity is silly. But you know what? Take it from a guy like Jeff, and uh, he's dead. He, you know, he's devoted his life, at least the last thirty years of his life, to this. And somebody to devote their life to uh, to a paranormal activity, whether it's real or not, uh, whether it's something you can prove or you can't, uh, that still says something because there are lots of different Taps families out there, or Taps uh, groups and stuff that actually are that are really serious about this stuff and actually dedicate their life to it and. Uh, you you would not figure that, but uh, yeah, I mean, spirits are around. You know, I, I'm not saying you got to believe, but I've always been one to believe, and and, and and not just because of a religious point with with God or Jesus or or the devil or whatever. It's it's basically because you know spirits are around. If you believe in Santa Claus, if you believe in the Easter Bunny or dinosaurs or cavemen or or you know. Or even even the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, who or God who uh, created the world, then you should believe in paranormal activity because I believe it. I think it, it it is out there. They made enough movies about it. They made a lot of documentaries about it. 
You know, and there's people, like I said, like Jeff, who are dedicating their life to it. So, uh, that totally believe that it's real. So, you know what? More power to everybody. Anyway, I'm Frank Slauson, and uh, thanks again for tuning in to my latest interview. Uh, this was kind of a bonus kind of interview for the month of April, uh, even though I'm airing this on May 1st. But it's still, uh, we're, we're going to try to get some more guests, and, uh, and the season's almost over. And I'm trying to get uh, a couple, two or three more big guests to close off uh, the, the fifth season of the Frank Sloss Show because this summer I want to do more interviews and I want to do, I want this to be the format now because uh, the Greenbush Tribune, the, the where I live right in this home, in my hometown, recently just did an article on me on my interviews. If you, in case you didn't know, if you don't follow me on Facebook, you should. Uh, they did an article on me based on the interviews that I've done, and I really want to keep this going, because uh, that's the second article now to be written. First time I ever read in the paper, the first article that was written was an online article from my be my friend, Ken Korchek, but uh, but he kind of got the ball rolling by let me uh, by uh, helping me get uh, the Tribune to do an article, because they were interested in my story, and it's something that nobody else around this area, besides one other friend that I have, that I know of, is doing stuff like this. Not even the radio stations do stuff like this around our area, which is kind of sad. So, hey, you never know. I mean, maybe this is the maybe this is the year where I'll finally get my foot in the door, or maybe just still get a cot in the door. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm Frankie Slauson, and we'll see you next time for another great Frankie Slauson show, interview and video and whatever. Bye bye.